Roots are pretty weird. I mean, obviously, if I asked you the square root of four, most of you would blurt out two. And, you know, you kind of understand it's something to the effect of because two times two is four, right? You, you kind of know it. Square root of nine is three. But the real answer is that this little root sign has a number right here. And nobody writes it. It's so common in math that they just stopped writing it. And this is secretly a little two, right? You do notice it when you have something like cube root. You totally notice that three. But when there's no number, it is a two. And so what that means is you're looking for this many grouped together. So in the case of root nine, if I factored this out, it would be three and three. So I could rewrite that as three times three. And because there's a two here, I'm looking for groups of two. There's a group of two, it's a miracle. The answer is it comes out and the answer is three. But if I had something like the square root of 18, you know, actually <coughs> your answer would probably be there is no square root of 18. And then if you put it in a calculator, it's even worse because you get like some horrific decimal and then you get it wrong on your test. But this is how you would do it. You would do the square root of 18. You would recognize that there's secretly a two there and you would factor this. You'd say, well, that's nine times two. Maybe I'll circle that. And this is three times three. I'm gonna circle those. And then slowly, don't like get too cocky. You look at this and you say, do I have any pairs of two? Oh, I totally do. Here's a pair. They come out of jail. In the event that the other guy doesn't have a partner to make it a pair of two, he does not escape jail. The answer is three root two. He has to stay inside. So that's it. And it gets even crazier, right? So that's how roots work. Instead of memorizing all your square roots, when you get older, they, they become weird. So same thing here. If you have a cube root of something like 27, in this case, I'm not looking for pairs of twos. I'm looking for groups of right threes. So you would break this down. That's nine times three. This is obviously three times three. It's a perfect miracle. Do I have any triplets or groups of threes? I do. They all come out of jail. Is there anybody stuck in jail? In this case, there is not. So that's the answer. So now I'll do one where, like, I don't want to ruin the ending for you, but let's say I'm going to make someone still stuck in jail. Let's say I had the root, cube root of 54, right? <laughs> in this case, I'm going to break it down. This is 27 and 2. That guy's there. This is 9 and 3. Circle my dead ends. This is 3 and 3, and I'm done. So now, do I have any triplets, any groups of three? Oh, cool. That's cool. So they come out of jail. Is anybody stuck in jail? This guy, this lone ranger, is absolutely stuck in jail. So that is my final answer. So it's pretty cool. Um, when you get to fractions, <coughs> they it's, it's similar. And I think the best way to do a fraction is to break it apart. So if you had something like this, if you had, what is the, you know, fourth root of one over 64. What is total, and now I'm not looking for triplets or, or groups of two, I'm looking for groups of four, right? So in this case, the best thing to do with the fraction is to make this two separate problems. You have the fourth root of one over the fourth root of 64. And what I did is totally legal. You can totally do that. You can break them apart. I wouldn't do it in my head. I think it's too stressful. I would make them into two fractions. The fourth root of one, if I factored one, it would be one times one times one times one. There's my group of four, right? I'm not even gonna do that. So the top is one. Fourth root of one is one. This one's a little weirder, so I'm actually gonna break it down. This would be eight and eight, right? And this would be four and two. This would be four and two. This would be two and two. This would be two and two. And I better circle my dead ends because this is getting kind of hectic, okay? So it'd be something to that effect. And this one is actually, I messed up. I was trying to make it come out easy, but it's still a good lesson. One, two, groups of four. One, two, three, four. A two comes out of jail. And these two guys are cool. They're a pair, but they're not a group of four. So they are totally stuck in jail. And instead of writing two times two, I'm just gonna write four. And that's my answer. And I know there's a lot of nerds out there saying, no, 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 you have to rationalize the denominator. You can't have a root in the denominator. I agree, we'll do that in the next video. It is illegal to leave the root in the denominator. Don't call the cops, like, right, we're friends. Let's just play this cool. I'll teach you later how to rationalize the denominator. But for now, this is the basic principle behind doing these uh, square roots, and that's it. Remember, if you're struggling in this class in your uh, local high school, you can take it online at Silicon Valley High School and get the credits there and they'll be transferred back to your high school.